It's time to dish with the Paddock Prince as we make the turn toward the Kentucky Derby. It's pretty real now going forward, David. 100 to the winter point races, three of them this weekend. Another 50 jobber on Sunday. All told, that's seven winning your in spots, basically. Winner and runner-up on Saturday, winner on Sunday in the Sunland Derby. Sort of a, a moving weekend and uh, pedal to the metal from here on out, I'd say. Yeah, it's getting to the exciting part. It's kind of separation time for a lot of horses. So, you know, horses that don't have points are going to have to pick up points this weekend, obviously. And then horses like Instant Coffee and some horses that already have points looking to build on their resume. Like you said, you got Louisiana, you got the Jeff Ruby Steak Steak, and then Sunland Park, which I completely forgot about is on Sunday. Is that, <laughs> is that a 50-pointer only, you said? Yeah, 50. So uh, need, to, need to win, basically, unless uh, there is a horse in there that won the prep which I think was worth 20. So maybe a second place finish might be enough for him. But uh, before we look at the Louisiana Derby, which did some of us a solid by drawing so early, let's take another look at your top 10, uh, which is from last week, uh, admittedly, but didn't have any prep races this weekend. So not a lot of changes, obviously. And you and I agree. We actually have the same exact top three and I believe our top six is the same with maybe a, a little, uh, I think I have hit show one higher than go rocket ride. Uh, but instant coffee is, is your highest listed on there in the Louisiana Derby, but we see Kings barn as well. And uh, I think that I've heard some poo pooing of the group, but I think especially this top maybe six to eight is not bad. No, I don't think it's that bad. I just think a lot of horses this year haven't run the crazy figures yet. So it's not – people aren't – you know, the Arabian Nights of the world aren't on the trail anymore. So Forte is really the only horse I feel like that has a lot of steam at this point. So there's a lot of two to be determined in some of these races. Like I said last week on the show, there's a lot of – there's not much, there's a lot of plotters and not a lot of speed in, the, so in these races so far. So if a horse like Go Rocket Ride or even Kings Barnes this weekend can show that – I know Go Rocket Rides run in the Santa Anita Derby, but if a horse can show that they have some early speed and keep it going, it can make it the Derby even a little more interesting because it just seems like everybody's a plotter at this point. I don't know. Or a closer, should I say. I shouldn't call them a plotter. Closer type horses. Well, that's a, a perfect segue because the Louisiana Derby has, I don't, I mean, I don't want to say zero speed. Someone's going to be on the lead. And there are some pace ratings that are, you know, I would say typical of, a decent pace, but looking at the Louisiana Derby, and this is from Brisnet. Bear with me. I know you're a buyer guy, but just to make the point that somewhat middle column run style, E is for the early pace type horses. Not a single horse has an E designation. And the PTS column is for Karen speed points, which is zero to eight early speed. No sevens or eight only disarm from the Asmus and Barnes of six, everyone else less than that. There's just no speed in this Louisiana Derby. No. So I glanced at the time form U S um, speed uh, pace projector. And you would have to think based on looking at that in the form that Kings Barnes going to go. And then Jace's road is probably going to go. I feel like Cox is going to send Jace's road to try to get position. And if Kings Barnes breaks, well, I would assume he's on the lead and J unless Jace's road is just hell bent on getting it. Cause Kings Barnes shown the ability to set off. But like you said, I don't – everybody in that race, they all look the exact same to me outside of Kings Barnes. A bunch of horses who have closed from off the pace, horses that need to step up. Obviously, Kings Barnes needs to step up. But like even like Instant Coffee, he ran a good race last time out. But I'm not playing a horse like that at 2-1 to one in a race like this. No, I'm, I'm not either. And here uh, are my odds. Uh, these are my odds, my personal – like the price I would want to bet the horse – uh, instant coffee. I, I do have as the most likely winner, uh, having the, I guess not really the prep win. It was two races back in the LeCompte, but it went over the track, but seven to two, we're not going to get based on the morning line, which, which I thought was a little light. I was surprised that they made him that low, but I mean, even if he's three to one, I'm just not excited about betting this horse. Tappet's conquest, uh, perhaps a mulligan 10 to one on the morning line. I, I thought that was too high. Now, again, this isn't my morning line. I'm not saying Tappet's Conquest is going to be six to one. I'm saying I think that'd be a fair price. So if he's 10 to one, I'd be pretty excited. He was way, way, way too far back 
uh, in the Risen Star. And even though that was a fast pace and closers did well, I just didn't really see that as his game and was surprised to see that he was there in the early stages. He gets Manny Franco. I'm definitely interested in Tappet's conquest here. Yeah, so if you look at the figures from the Risen Star in that allowance race on um, February 18th, which was on Risen Star Day, that number actually came back faster than the Risen Star yes, itself. It did. So it's going to be interesting to see, like the seven horse Cagliostro and the ten Dennington, who got fast, ran in the same race, got faster numbers than the Risen Star. It's going to be interesting to see how they bet those two races com- compared to each other on that day. Obviously, those two aren't stakes face, but they did run faster than the Risen Star. And I thought the Risen Star was a complete eyesore, in my opinion. I don't like anybody out of there. Maybe Tappet's Conquest can. <laughs> He's bred for the distance. And it is interesting. I didn't look at the whole card yet, but is that Manny Franco's only mount of the day? Because I don't. Think- so he's coming for one mount. I know it's a derby prep, but it's interesting that he's coming to ride that horse from New York. I know Cox uses him a lot in New York. Yeah, and there, there was some talk of, about him rerouting. So I don't think the nine post is really that bad anyway, but we'll see. So stay tuned for that. He would definitely be one I'd be keen on, on watching the board. And you mentioned uh, number seven and number 10 coming out of that allowance race. Uh, they're my third and fourth choices respectively. I'm a little nervous, and we've talked about this before, David. Uh, both of their best performances came with the Lasix on. Now Lasix off here. I made Dennington 8-1 to one instead of Caglius, or I made him a little uh, lower because I do like Gunrunner a little better than Upstart uh, in terms of this mound 3 16th distance. Uh, so that was a, a positive, I thought, and that is important to note. They are going nine and a half furlongs here, so uh, not for the faint of heart distance-wise. So I, I think Dennington has some upside. That was a quick race, though, potential bounce candidate, but I, I think he'll end up being an okay price, definitely one of the ones I'm expecting to use. Yeah, Dennington's ran a lot for a horse. I mean, he started his first race was in August. He's already ran eight times, where a horse like Cagliostro, I think I'm saying that name right, is running third off the layoff. He's only ran three times, so there's maybe more upside for him. Um, he's also going to be more forward than Dennington. I think I saw a morning line on Twitter, and I'm not a morning line maker, but I think there's about a 0% chance Kings Barnes is not the second choice in this race. I find it hard to believe that Sun Thunder and some of these horses are going to be lower than him, but I guess we'll see. Uh, yeah, I would I would think with Pletcher shipping in, and that's actually a reason that Kelly Ostro and Dennington appealed to me a little bit. Uh, certainly nothing against Cherie DeVoe or Kenny McPhee, yeah. but – Let's be honest, if Brad Cox had unleashed an allowance horse who ran that kind of number in an allowance race to a stakes, we'd be talking about it like, oh, another another derby contender for Brad. Yeah. And because it's, you know, Kenny and Cherie, a little less enthusiasm, which helps the price. And I'm going to I'm going to use that public sentiment to hopefully make some money if they run well. Uh, So you and I agree. Instant coffee, not worth a bet. Uh, we disagree on maybe the alternative. I have Kings Barn a little higher than I expect him to be. I agree with you. I think he'll be no worse than third choice. So from a you know pure win odds play, he's not for me. Uh, but as an alternative for instant coffee, it's certainly hard for me to argue against using any of the other four or five logicals. Yeah, and I wonder with Disarm, he's not projected to be on the lead early, but I wonder if Rosario and Asmussen are kind of, kind of, he ran a mile last time and he's stretching out. He does have some, somewhat, he's 93 early pace figure, so he's not way off. I wonder if they're going to use him early as well, because Rosario's a very good speed rider when he sends. So I'm not saying they're going to dead send with him, but I think he's another horse who can get position early. But I think the whole key to this race is the pace, because pace makes the race, and there's one and a half speed horses on paper. So we'll see what happens early in this race. But I yeah, think, I in my to- opinion, go ahead. Yeah, I was. I definitely found. I mentioned that nine and a half furlong distance. Uh, you know, the, the the Derby is very unique, and and Preakness and Belmont. But the longer they go, does not benefit closers, which uh, you know a lot of people. I still hear it. You'd think that'd be dispelled by now. Um, so, pace is a big weapon here. Uh, if if you're able to go one thirteen in a nine and a half furlong race, that might be it. So yeah, it's it's going to be interesting to see what they do early. No, I completely agree, and I haven't fully looked at all the cards, but I'm, I know this is going to come to a shock to some people. But I'm going to like—I think I'm going to like Kings Barnes in the in the in the, in the multi rager races. I'm not saying he's a um, you know win bet at four to one or whatever he is. I'm just saying in a multi race bet, 
I think he's going to probably be a lean for me, but I have to go through the rest of the card. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, with, with 12 horses, a lot of people like coverage, and it's going to be the last leg and a lot of multi-race wagers. That is that what it that. is? Is it going to be the last leg? I was wondering. Well, I, I think the, they'll have a pick five that ends in race 15 as well. So in that regard, it'll be the third. It'll be the second leg of that pick five. Okay. But there will be I an figured. all-stakes pick five. That's what I figured. That, that ends in the Louisiana Derby. And the all-stakes, uh, what are they calling it, bluegrass to the bayou pick five, also ends with the Louisiana Derby. So uh, an important race for sure in the Maltese. We're doing this on Monday. The UAE Derby just drew. I'm not very interested in that. The Ruby will draw on Tuesday. Uh, and I mentioned those not because you or I have any idea who, who we'd pick in either of those races, but big weekend, as we said, what is a looking ahead to the Kentucky Derby? What are things you would see this week where you would say that horse has, I'm out for the Derby. And um, I don't mean that they finish last. Obviously that's a, an X, but what type of, Decent, okay performance. Do other people like that you find yourself thinking, yeah, that wasn't for me? Well, I want to, I don't know, it's a good question. I want to see the, like the Louisiana Derby talking about the pace. I want to see, like, if Kings Barnes goes wire to wire and he gets no pace pressure, I'm going to be like, eh, I don't know about that horse because you're going to have horses like Go Rocket Ride and some other speed horses probably in the Derby. But, like, if, let's say, Kings Bar gets an easy lead and Instant Coffee runs him down from way back, like, you might want to upgrade that performance. Um, you know, if you go to the Rubies, I don't ever know what to do with that race. I know yeah. it, won it was the Derby winner last year. So people are probably going to say what? And my Derby um, pick. He's running this weekend, and he had a bad excuse last time. He was on the inside of that fairgrounds turf. Yeah, where he wanted I'm no running part him of. back. But it's hard to figure out where you want to be on the fairgrounds turf. Right. So I don't. Well, so, especially because um, they're moving the rail in a little bit. I saw that. They're moving it to 27 feet. Yeah. So it's hard to figure out where you want to be on there. But, no, back to your question. Like, in the Ruby, I don't ever know what to do with that race. Like, I saw two Phils is running, who's a dirt horse. I saw Major Dude, who's mostly a turf horse for pleasure <laughs> running. What's the prep for the um, Ruby? I saw those two horses are coming back to run. So. Yeah, and uh, the winner uh, actually got a, a fast number, and I'm drawing a blank on his name. but um, Congruent. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, he uh, speaking of Ragas in any way, it was it was competitive with uh, basically Forte is the fastest. And then after that, there's a clear second tier. And he was right there with practical move and uh, the, the horse who won at uh, Tampa Bay. So let me ask you, well, maybe you know, back to your question real quick. I think like Tap at Trice last weekend, I think he showed a lot that he can overcome. So I think in these preps, if horses can win with less than ideal trips, it's a good sign because it's a 20 horse field. Also, you right. want to run good numbers. So I'm just looking for horses that can improve. Do you think the Louisiana Derby is too far out or do you like the timetable to the Derby? I, I don't love it. Um, six is definitely my limit, though. Uh, you know, I know after last week with no preps, there was some chatter of, oh, why wasn't the Ruby this weekend or whatever. I, I definitely think when we're starting to talk about seven and then, you know, even eight, and nine weeks, uh, not not for me. So that's definitely uh, a consideration. Like when I, I saw some chatter about confidence game, training up to the Derby, Terrible. absolute toss if no. they do that. Yeah. Uh, same with the Tampa Bay Derby, which I don't think is in play with Tampa Trice, but Pletcher's tried that before with Destin. Um, and we saw it, I think, with Helium. Was that the horse Cassie had? That yeah, he did. The Derby? Yeah. yeah. Uh, six is my limit as of right now. Things always change. But, yeah, th this is – you need a race at this point going in. Yeah, and I think we also need to see another horse really step forward because if Forte stepped forward in the Florida Derby and let's say he runs a 100 or a 101, if he has two perfect races going into the Derby, he's probably going to be an overwhelming favorite at this point unless a horse steps forward. I also saw there's a Japanese horse going to the Santa Anita Derby that I don't know anything about, so that's kind of interesting. Yeah, no, and, and I've always said, um, you know, kind of speaking of what you want to see this weekend, like the, the UAE Derby, I don't care how they run in it, if they're there and then ship over here for the Derby, it's just too much. Like the horse, you can't be expected to make that ship and win a race like the Derby. It's not like the Breeders Cup where you've been campaigning all year and things are spread out a little more. This horse coming from Japan to run in a prep. I mean, if he runs well, I, I'd have to think about it. I mean, you would see how he stacks up and what price he's going to be, which given the story and the connections would probably be over bet, but 
it'd be great to see. And I, I think that's the way you have to do it. I'm shocked Aiden O'Brien has not tried it yet. I, I, yeah. I do not understand why he's going to UAE. It's not like, I mean, he ships over here all the time from Ireland the day before the race. Like they have the best air travel in the world. Uh, it's just not going to work from UAE. So I, I hope whoever wins is nominated and he runs off the screen and people want to bet again, like Crown Pride and that other horse who had no chance because just it can't be done. No, and I, it's, it is, I think that's one of the only preps over there. I mean, I know you have some 20 pointers in England or Europe, but um, I think it's interesting they don't ship over too because the purses are so big, like in a million dollar grade one or 750. So the money's good. It yeah. is, and you would get your horse acclimated here. You wouldn't have to ship over the last week or two before the Derby. They're here. So I guess Japan's going to be the first one. It looks like they're going to start shipping horses over and maybe they'll start a new trend because I think at this point, outside of the first couple, I think the Derby this year field is hunting for some new horses unless somebody like instant coffee or Kings Barnes really steps forward this weekend. Right. Yeah. I would say uh, either of those two, maybe Tappet's conquest. Uh, That's your guy. Somewhat of a known name going into the risen star before that disappointment, but Anyone else would be another new name we're talking about for sure. So uh, we'll be interesting. 12 horses, which I like. Great for verticals. Uh, one of 15 races. I'm I'll sad. be done after 12. 12. Just, I'm uh, just letting everybody know when the late pick five ends in the good, the Louisiana Derby, there will not be a 13, 14, and 15. I'm not, I'm, I'm done at 12. No. So the sheet will not have races. No. Not even a pick five for race 11? No, if they, because I, I, I highly doubt people are going to keep going after race 12 because usually these days they put the big race as the last race and it's over. Then I looked and it was like three more races after. So the card's yeah. like 22 hours total now. So I think after the, <laughs> after the Louisiana Derby, everybody, I'm done included. I'm going to be done for that place at Air Fairgrounds at least. Fair enough. Well, we will certainly look forward to the first 12 races selections uh, at the Paddock Prince and guessing Gulfstream will be the other. Yeah, well, no, we have Gulfstream. Who's Earthway? <laughs> I don't know. I gotta look. I gotta think about it. I, I, I might do a late pick five there, like some there you go. right up on the late pick five. But there, well, if you do the late pick five, that'll cover the Bayou Blue. That's what I was thinking. Too. That's what I was thinking. Because Gulfstream has twelve races. Turfway has twelve races. The Fairgrounds has fifteen races. So I don't know if people want thirty nine races. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, eh, pick pick five would work for me, especially because uh, I'll be down there. So I'll, I'll need some help on the, the tracks I won't be at. Uh, so we'll appreciate that. That's the Paddock Prince at picks.horseracingnation.com. And uh, we'll be back next week with the new top 10. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. All right. David Lovich, everybody. I'm Ed DeRosa. Good luck.